Hey, yo, what up? It's your boy. Studio Ghibli. It's a name that every father, mother, brother, and sister has definitely heard the name of and has most likely uttered at least once in their lifetime. And yet simultaneously, it is a name that for some reason, only 10% of that community can actually pronounce correctly. It is, without a doubt, the world's most famous anime studio. And regardless of whether you perceive Studio Ghibli to be the greatest thing that has ever been made on the face of the earth, or you just think it's some kind of throwaway children's thing that's a little bit too overrated for you connoisseur tastes of animu, there is no denying its absolute monstrous success, not only in Japan, but of course, internationally as well. And one such film out of the giant catalogue of films that Studio Ghibli has created, I dare say is probably the most uh, famous Studio Ghibli film is my Neighbor Totoro, or Tonari no Totoro. It's a movie you've definitely seen before. I mean, you see the picture right here to the side of me. You've seen that character before somewhere, whether your friend who's a weeb who owns it, or a 35-year-old mother who lives alone has some kind of Totoro picture in their room. Just a wild example. But for My Neighbor Totoro, it doesn't stop there, ladies and gentlemen. Regardless of the fact that this movie came out in 1988, almost 35 years ago, it seems that we are still getting brand new Totoro content. And as you can see from this Japan Times article that I'm on right now, My Neighbor Totoro to be adapted into a stage play in Great Britain. The 1988 film directed by Oscar-winning anime creator Hayao Miyazaki will be turned into a live production under British playwright Tom Morton Smith and director Philem McDermott. That's a real name. With famed composer Joe Hisaishi providing the music. The stage adaption will be the first of its kind for My Neighbor Totoro and will premiere on October the 8th at London's Barbican Centre and run until January 21st. I assume October the 8th, 2022 till 2023, January the 21st. In a statement issued with the announcement of the co-production of the Royal Shakespeare Company and Nippon Television Network, Hisaishi said he believes the film delivers a universal message. It will reach a global audience even if the stage play is performed in a different language by people who grew up in an entirely different culture, see Hisaishi, who also acts as executive producer. So for you um, anime Puritans out there who perhaps are worried about this cross-pollination of mediums and, and countries, fear not as we have the original composer, Mr. Joe Hisaishi, who is going to be the executive producer. He's going to be overseeing the entire thing to make sure that it doesn't get completely whitewashed. That is, of course, a joke, but for those of you who took that seriously, I also understand your pain because, you know, up until recently and, uh, you know, the current trend of things of taking Japanese animated films and bringing them to a non-Japanese production and audience, you know, we tend to have had problems like that. Ghost in the Shell. So, you're probably thinking, Joey, why are you making a video on this topic? Well, I have a couple of thoughts about it that I would just like to share personally about it. Because, believe it or not, uh, Tonari no Totoro was one of my favorite anime films, or just films in general, to grow up with. And, you know, they say that My Neighbor Totoro is really boring to watch if you're already an adult or already deep into anime and then you go back to My Neighbor Totoro. This really is the kind of Ghibli film that is really shown shinily through nostalgia goggles. If you watch this as a kid, as did myself and many, many people probably watching this video as well, you would think that this film is absolutely a gem, a childhood gem, and it's because it is. I think the one thing that I've always praised Studio Ghibli about is the fact that it manages to create a variety of content that really does pertain to a extremely wide audience. You can have movies like My Neighbor Totoro and the modern day equivalent Gaki no Ue no Ponyo, which is definitely more aimed towards a younger audience in its theming, its animation and its storytelling. Which is all fine and dandy if you want to take a nice relaxing family weekend to just stay inside and watch a bit of Totoro and Ponyo. I ain't objecting that. But at the same time, Ghibli is also able to make some really hard hitting and dare I say adult oriented content as well. I mean, I don't think there is any denying that it's probably not a good idea to show your five year old who is heavily into Totoro, Studio Ghibli films like uh, Grave of the Fireflies and Princess Mononoke, or even something like 
Heisei Tanuki Pompoko with its rather adult-oriented, very difficult themes. So naturally speaking, just from the massive commercial success of Studio Ghibli and especially My Neighbor Totara and the notoriety that it comes with being the logo for the studio itself, it's really no surprise that uh, this kind of story has come out about it. Now you're probably thinking if you're a regular viewer of myself you're probably thinking Joe oh my god Joey's about to rip this to shit. He's gonna rip it apart. He's gonna give it a new asshole. And you're slightly wrong on that. Don't get me wrong I think branching out to different mediums is definitely a swing in the dark. I mean it's you know we've seen examples of it working really really well and we've seen examples of it working not so well. And in the case with this stage play adaptation in the UK of a Japanese animated film from 35, almost 35 years ago. It's really difficult to say, as of right now, whether this will actually be proven to be successful and will even translate well to a form of entertainment such as a stage play. Like, I'm not even going to pretend I know a whole lot about stage plays. I mean, you know, my favorite, like, musical is Rocky Horror Picture Show, so that probably goes to show what my, you know, taste of stage plays is like. But I guess the one issue that I kind of had, or the one question that I had, and it kind of just made me scratch my head a little bit when I saw this article, was why? Because if the entire purpose of recreating My Neighbor Totoro to a stage play is so that it can make the series or the movie or the IP reach a global audience and really branch its wings out from the confines of Japan, then I would argue the movie has already done that. Just the sheer fact that there are people who have never even heard of an anime before, who have most likely seen Totoro, or at least some kind of thumbnail or some kind of art of My Neighbor Totoro, whether that be through actual Totoro merch and, you know, visuals, or just from looking at the Studio Ghibli logo. Goes to show that I think in the case with the notoriety of Totoro outside of Japan, this the 35-year-old movie has already done that leaps and bounds. I totally understand why Joe Hisaishi might have decided, you know, maybe this might be a fun little experimental project to do because, you know, in at this case, Totoro has nothing to lose. Studio Ghibli has nothing to lose. If the stage play ends up being absolute doo-doo, then there is still the movie that people can go and enjoy. There is still the entire catalog of Ghibli movies that people can go and enjoy. What is going to be interesting though is, hypothetically, if this stage play actually proves to be so successful, or at least moderately successful, what is the next step after that. Is this going to be the start of a bunch of international stage plays based off anime IPs? It's hard to say. I mean, Japan has already done the whole anime to stage play thing multiple times, sometimes in the form of musicals, such as the Death Note musical and the Prince of Tennis musical and, uh, and a plethora of others that I can't be bothered to remember because, I mean, who the fuck cares, to be honest. But it really is just kind of interesting that they decided to go overseas immediately with My Neighbor Totoro and didn't decide, hey, what if we did a stage play of Totoro in Japan first and see how well that does? So, you know, in one breath, I, I kind of admire or, you know, respect Studio Ghibli for kind of taking the plunge with this because it really is just unexplored territory for Studio Ghibli films, or rather anime films in general. Like, I genuinely can't think of a single anime film that was turned into a English-speaking stage play. And if you can think of one, please let me know in the comments below. I do like, though, that the Japan Times article decided to add this little comment. The composer who provided the music for the film proposed the idea of a stage play to Miyazaki and obtained his consent, as if Miyazaki's going to give a shit at this point. Like, this man has literally retired, like, eight times now? This man has quit his job more times than Makarov has died in fairy tale. So yeah, it's really going to be interesting to see just what the reception of this kind of stage play is like, because I have a suspicion that they're probably going to try to market this particular stage play to perhaps a bunch of Brits who 
are not so well versed in anime. And look, as I make this video, I'm not like gagging at the fact that, oh, I won't be in London to be able to see this thing because to be honest, I'm not expecting this to be like amazing, amazing. But if it ends up do being amazing, amazing, hey, I'll, I'll spin on a dime on that. Like I, I'll be more than happy to take my words back because eating your own words is a YouTube specialty. But yeah, that's about it for my thoughts on uh, this interesting little piece of news. If you'd like to check out the article for yourself, hey, it's down in the description below. And uh, let me know what you think about this story down in the comments below. I'd be curious to hear what you have in mind. But thanks for watching, guys. Hey, if you'd like to support the channel, make sure to smack my face right here to subscribe. Let's keep making big channel number go bigger. By the way, we just hit 600,000 subscribers. Thank you very much, my boys, for that. I'll be next to my head is a couple more videos as well you can check out as well. And links to all my social medias down in the description below as always. But thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.